Hi, welcome back to another Slice of Silicon Hills. As always, I'm your host, Andrew Moore, and today, today I'm very happy to have Lorenzo Gomez on the show. So, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And so, Lorenzo is the executive director for the uh, the rather reclusive 8020 <laughs> Foundation. Uh, so the bit, the right? hidden entity, yeah. yeah. Uh, the 8020 Foundation. You help uh, f- uh, fund nonprofits and tech organizations. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So we're, well, it's more the tech ecosystem, tech you know. Ecosystem. But uh, but yeah. So we're the we're the private foundation of Graham Weston, and uh, we are we we want to invest in public charities that specify in certain areas that are kind of helping San Antonio become this entrepreneurial hub. We're just doing it from a very philanthropic nonprofit angle. Okay. So when well, first of all, I was. Um, I, I was kind of pitching the show uh, last yesterday at SA New Tech, and I said, "Who's heard of um, the Eighty Twenty Foundation?" Like five people raised their hand. <laughs> so yes, it's working. So uh, what what is it exactly that you guys do, and what's yeah. behind that name? Because a lot of people are going to say Eighty Twenty Foundation. Yeah, that? yeah. Well, so great question. The so it's the private it's the private foundation of Graham Weston. So okay. any anything that he wants to give a charitable don- donation through goes through the Eighty Twenty Foundation. And uh, it's actually been so you know to your, you know to the five hands raising, uh, most people think Rackspace Foundation when they think of Graham, and uh, Rackspace is actually a foundation where the employees give to it and then they give to charities in the area of the of the Rackspace headquarters, and so this is all Graham's private philanthropy. So anything that he wants to give to personally goes through the eighty twenty okay, foundation. So this is like uh, maybe not a completely exact sense but this is his his uh, private checking account that's right this okay. is this is the stuff that he is very passionate about personally okay so and why is it called the 8020 so the, so the reason it's called 8020 foundation and actually i when i when i first started digging into it um i really didn't like the name and so we started debating and and he said hey there's a book called uh, the 8020 principle by richard kosh and you need to read it and it's one of the top five books of my entire career and uh, and to, to give you the 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 uh, executive summary of it in I think it's 1897 there was an Italian economist named Vilfredo Pareto, and he noticed that 80 percent of the wealth of Italy was owned or controlled by 20 percent of its citizens, and so he started realizing this imbalance of inputs versus outputs in every every aspect of society, and so um, there, so there's it's also known as Pareto's law the law of the vital few and basically it, it states that very few inputs equal the majority of outputs. And I remember a story when I was at Rackspace in the very, very early days where Graham and Lanham got up in our open book meetings, the company meetings, and they said, hey, we've noticed that 20% of our customers account for 80% of our revenue. And so we're gonna segment them off and create a division around them and profile them so that we can create more. And so when it comes to Graham's philanthropy, he basically, uh, so what we try to do is to say, we only wanna fund the 20% of people, organizations, or initiatives that have 80% of the impact okay, given so our you areas. Are a, you are a very focused, high, high impact. We are a very focused, uh, that's right. Okay, so then I guess when somebody uh, you know comes to you and says, I have this organization, I have this nonprofit, um, you know, it's this great big ideal. What are the factors that you kind of evaluate them by when yeah. you decide, are you one of these 20 percenters? that I want to fund? Yeah, great question. So the, fr- the very first easy one is, is this regarding San Antonio? So can San Antonio benefit from this? So Graham has chosen this city, you know, it's the city that, he, that um, it's the city that he's done all his business in, you know, Rackspace was born right here in the heart of downtown San Antonio. And so um, he's very passionate about San Antonio. So that's the first real easy one. And then we have kind of three buckets, as I call them, or three pillars of areas that we invest. The first one is um, creating an urban environment or helping helping create more urban options for San Antonio. And that really goes back to when I was at Rackspace, we had a really hard time recruiting talent. And the reason was a lot of people wanted an urban option and there was just no urban option um, before a couple years ago. And now there are so many things to do downtown and it's not that the urban option is good and suburban option is bad, but we just want more options for people so that when they're considering moving to San Antonio, they go, oh wow, you guys got a lot of things for us to do. Okay, so well, so first of all, they have to fit into kind of these, I guess these three key areas These you three, have? These three key areas. Okay, so the first one that it has to so The help. first one is is helping downtown, you okay. know, with the urbanization of downtown. Okay, what's, the, the second is one? is helping entrepreneurship, so creating San Antonio to be this entrepreneurial hub or destination. 
And the third is really, um, I, I, I go back and forth between saying STEM education and really preparing people for the jobs of tomorrow. And I think that it's, you know, that's what we want is the jobs of tomorrow um, are in such rare supply. They're in such short supply that if you have them and if you can become a city that, that produces them, you will be, be one of the cities that wins the fight for the global talent, for the, the global knowledge economy. Okay, exactly. so you, you really want us to be a city where the education is focused towards the, the future economy, basically. Yeah, yeah. One, yeah, yeah. So once you're, in, once, you're in, once you're in those three buckets, are there any particular factors that you look at, like team structure, anything when these people come to you? You know, there, well, there's, a, there's, there's the usual uh, variables like, is this a fiscally responsible you know, nonprofit. Um, you know, are they are they operating as lean as possible? We don't like waste, and so and so. It's you know, one of the things is we as a foundation operate like a pretty lean startup, and so we are looking for other organizations that run lean, that kind of use tools, you know, to, to help them do more with less. Um, and so we we don't like really giving to big organizations that have a lot of overhead because it's a lot harder to do big impact stuff. That doesn't say we'll do it because we've given to big organizations like UTSA, uh, right. but those are for very specific programs. And actually, there are a lot of big organizations that will have initiatives that fit our model. And so we're trying to find those constantly. But it's And do these have to be like particularly disruptive to the industry? In sense you know, they don't, they don't have to be disruptive, but I think one of our advantages as a startup is, um, and, and one of our mandates from Graham is um, he, he wants us to invest in things that most other foundations won't invest in. So if it's, if it's a particularly radical idea in our given areas, a focus, then we'll we'll take a shot at it. And just like a startup, if it fails, we'll pivot. You know, um, we're all about learning as fast as possible and pivoting if we need to. We don't, um, you know, we don't structure, we don't factor in failing. Um, obviously, we don't want to, but we'll 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 roll the dice if we need to if we think there's a really good payoff. Okay, for it. so if somebody out there has some sort of like really crazy radical idea. For a new startup, then yeah. you guys are kind of the ones to go to. I'll, Other I'll, people are going to say that's that's a little too crazy. I'll give us. you I'll give you an example. We okay. got uh, we got pitched by three 16 year old uh, young men that are entrepreneurs that are that have created a nonprofit called Apps for Aptitude, and they were actually on your show they, recently. Um, or I think we I think Silicon Hills, I, I, we did an article on this. we did an article yes Silicon Hills News yes uh, dot com did an article on yes. This, yes, and so they pitched us about this great idea, and the and the problem is is that if you're three 16 year olds more than likely you're probably not going to get an interview or a meeting with the key players in the philanthropic world that can help you right. and so but their area was so focused on creating apps for the uh, for the app store helping other high school and middle school kids create apps i mean it was just a perfect match for us and the fact that they were 16 only excited us because those are the future entrepreneurs of this city, and so we want to encourage that. And that's typically uh, not a nonprofit that I don't think most people would have even looked at. Uh, okay, so I, I know that you focus on uh, nonprofits and tech organizations, and not like for-profit startups. Right. But how do you fit into the um, like the kind of the conversation, the national conversation about job creation, both in San Antonio, Texas, United States? Because I know that's always a big topic in the news. Yeah. Uh, how do you guys uh, do? You, well, do you fit into the job creation? Yeah, absolutely. I think we fit into job creation. I think that um, the cities of the future that we're going to survive, the city of the future that will that will um, that will make it past all the problems that we have right now, are the cities that can develop and create talent, not attract talent. So the old model of a city was, let's put up a beautiful park, let's do all these crazy things, and people will move here. And to a certain degree, San Antonio has a lot of that going on, but the city of the future will be able to produce talent. And what I mean by that is, if St. Mary's, Our Lady of the Lake, and UTSA, or even our high schools, were producing um, Python programmers, or web designers, or mm, uh, you okay. know, you know, people with these really high-dense skills, these high impact skills, then the Facebooks, Amazons, and the Googles of the world would put offices here, not the other way around. And that is one of the new things that we've noticed is that uh, we want our city to be a, a, to, to be producing talent in a really big way. And that's really what we're trying to, to help spur. So when we talk about kind of um, the workforce and how we fit into that, that's what we're trying to do is kind of light the match so mm -hmm. that these places can kind of catch on to that vision. All right. So you want now? I now I know the model is kind of we're, we're Texas. We have maybe a slightly better tax structure, and we can pull people away from right. California and Silicon Valley. Right. But you want the future to be we actually grow our tech 
people that fill our tech industries here. That's right. Okay. Yeah, and there are very few places that do it. You know, Silicon Silicon Valley has a lot of that. You know, Stanford is really famous for that. But that's just one area, and I think that we can have different niches, if you will, of our slice of the tech pie. Um, but I really think that if if UTSA, St. Mary's, and they're doing a great job right now, but we really would love to see our city focus on the production of talent because that's really when you're not going to have to go pitch the Googles and Facebooks and Amazons of the world. They will come to you and say, hmm. um, I want to open an office here because you guys are producing it and we want to steal all your talent. And that's great. That's what we want. Okay. <laughs> that's what you want. So um, how much... Uh, I guess funding did you project to give out this year? Because I know that you guys have just come into full gear uh, about the the last year, right? Yeah. So how how much how much funding are we talking about putting out into the community? community well, this well, year? this year this year eighty twenty is probably going to do about one point five uh, million dollars, and okay. it really the the all of that really depends on the types of programs that we see that fit. And so, you know, every year we Graham and I reevaluate it, and it might go up, it might go down, but we're really looking for great matches um, so great organizations or programs that match our mission to give to so um, you know we want we want more cool activities so we're not trying to we're, we're, we're actively looking and kind of it's it's almost I feel like a sales guy sometimes because I'm hunting for hot leads right. you know to actually go and, and have a high impact um, so but that's we're, we're scheduled to do 1.5. Uh, okay, and so to, for, for the audience to uh, anyone in the audience to take advantage of that they have to be um, well, they have to fit into one of those those three buckets. Yes, yeah, so you have to be a registered 501c charity, you know, okay. as, as designated by the IRS. You All know, right. you've got to be either in San Antonio or doing work that will that that is gonna that San Antonio will get the benefit of, and then be in our three key areas there. And one of the things that we have in our application is we ask, how is what you're doing, or how is the program that you're asking uh, money for? fit into the 80-20 principles. How are you going to be a few inputs, maximum outputs model? And uh, and so that really forces people to really, you know, to really, to, 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 to evaluate what they're doing and how they fit with us. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah. well, you guys, you guys got it. Well, uh, thanks for coming on the show then. Yeah, yeah. Great. Well, thanks for having me. Look yeah. forward to what you guys are doing. And as always, if you have uh, questions, comments, want to know anything more, uh, you can uh, look for us on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, Facebook, it's uh, Facebook slash the Slice of Silicon Hills, and Twitter, it's at Slice of Silicon. And uh, as always, thank you to uh, Andrew, Tommy, Travis, Roel, and Kirsten in the uh, Silver Fox Studios for helping me put this on. And thank you for watching a Slice of Silicon Hills. <laughs>